Hi students, welcome to our channel Vidyan Sarvas. This is Shivaramu Dalanka. In this video, we will discuss about the 10th class, 13th lesson, The World Between the Wars. This is the part 1 video. Okay, so around in the beginning of the 20th century, at that time, the world had a population of nearly 1.6 billion. Okay, and also uh, due to the outbreak of the industrial revolution in 19th century due to that capitalism had emerged the many people under their livelihood and means they provide a lot of ways for earning the livelihood Pre uh, previously most of the people means 99 percent of the people depend upon agriculture after the industrial revolution the people divert towards industries so it, it means it created a so many ways for earning uh, their livelihood and also at the same time in this time in this period most of the world dominated by the Britain only it means Britain had a vast colonial empires so that's why the Britain called as a the Sun never set empire because uh, Britain had a colonies in uh, Asia Africa Europe in American countries continents so as a result uh, when the sun rises in the asia it also comes comes under the control of the britain and also the africa whatever it may be so that's why the at the time the britain called as a the sun never set empire as well as the britain also called as a workshop of the world due to the outbreak of industrial revolution okay and also in this time and in the beginning of the 20th century the world was divided into the mainly two blocks one is the western part another is the rest part the west part mostly dominated by the economic growth and also the rest part mainly faced the economic backwardness the western countries comprise mostly britain usa germany france italy japan and others and the rest means the colonial countries of Asia and uh, Africa. So in this way, the world was divided based on the economical status. And also the at the time, one famous historian of the 20th century, namely Eric Hepsborn, called the 20th century as a age of extreme. Why he called the age of extreme? Extreme means everything is high level. So based on uh, some characteristics he called the 20th century as a age of extremes those are the the demo democratic aspirations in this means uh, in the 20th century people uh, ideology developed and also the interest towards the democratic aspirations rather than the monarchical rulings and also in this time the fascist domination the fascist means is simply nothing but a, a totalitarian government totalitarian means uh, all powers concentrated in the hands of the one person or one group mostly italy and germany and also the literacy levels the literacy levels also increased in the 20th century and also next the scientific knowledge in this period the scientific knowledge uh, reached uh, new heights and also the due to the uh, development of science and technology the average life expectancy has also increased and also the in this period in the 20th century the women also fight for the right to vote okay uh, universal adult franchise okay and also in this period and uh, due to the outbreak of the Russian Revolution the socialist governments were uh, formed at the same time the people also fight for the equality and fraternity at the same time in the 20th century from the 1929 to 1939 the world faced the disastrous Great Depression okay by all these things the Eric Sutton called this period as a age of extremes and finally, I conclude that the 20th century, it is a period of great expectations because from the beginning of the 20th century, people had a lot of expectations and also a lot of views about the future. As a result, different experiments 
were conducted in science and technology due to the technology some a negative side of the experiments means uh, the dangerous developments so overall, overally the 20th century is a period of great expectations experiments and uh, dangerous developments okay and also the come to the beginning of the 20th century so in the beginning of the 20th century at the time the uh, mostly the world divided into the eastern part and western part at the same time mostly particularly in european countries the most of the developed uh, european countries are uh, the divided and also the became the hostile groups means rival blocks for the domination over the others in this way in europe different rival blocks were formed one group is consist of germany austria hungary and uh, another group it is a uh, britain france and russia it means and uh, due to the outbreak of the first world war most of the and uh, it uh, most of the european and asian countries touched by the these countries and also the in eastern part no country was left untouched by the japan and uh, china and western part usa it means uh, when the rival blocks was formed automatically they helped each other and also the in lay of others they attacked the other countries so that's why the first world war and second world war was happen due to the mainly rival blocks and also the these power blocks and also come to the overall death and uh, destruction of the first and second world war in the first world war nearly 10 million people died in the battle and also out of 10 million 75000 were the indian soldiers who are fought on the lands of the asia europe and also africa on the side of britain okay and come to the second world war uh, regarding the military casualties it was nearly between the 22 to 25 millions and also the come to the civilians it comprised between the 40 to 52 millions out of the civilians mostly it means uh, nearly they comprise of nearly 6 millions are jews who were killed by the hitler and also simply called as a holocaust they are those are the victims of holocaust and also the uh, in 1945 the us were thrown a autumn bombs on hiroshima and nagasaki those deaths were nearly between the 1 lakh 50 thousand to 2 lakhs 46 thousands all are comes under the civilian deaths overall due to the outbreak of the war so many cities were destructed destructed and also the different side effects also raised due to the nuclear weapons particularly the leukemia and cancer linger for decades it means continued for so many years okay this is about the death and destruction of the first and second world war and come to the power blocks previously we discussed about the rival blocks and also the no of course the rival blocks it is compressed of one block is the power block another block is power block at the time the entire world divided into the different nation states and also the they also fought for the fought for the colonies it is a scramble among the industrialized nations for searching of the markets and also for searching of the raw materials they fought each other okay as a result there are mainly two blocks were emerged okay so in the first world war the main blocks are the one block is called as a central powers another is called as a entity powers the central powers and uh, entities and the second world war the axis powers and the allied powers okay the the axis powers led by the germany and the allied powers led by the britain later us and uh, us sir this is about the power blocks sir uh, in uh, both wars okay remaining topic discussed in the next video thank you if you like my video please like share and subscribe this is our facebook page and uh, youtube channel
Thank you.